country school in Japan. The, the students were about 10 years old. And there was one boy there who, who could speak English better than any other boy. And I knew immediately why. Because he didn't care about mistakes. He would make a lot of mistakes, but he just would enjoy talking English, you know. Hello, Mr. Dwight. Yeah. <laughs> so making mistakes is crucial to learning. Also, especially creativity. If you talk to any person who's very creative, they make a lot of mistakes and they even they even enjoy making mistakes to see what they can learn from them. Another type of courage is the courage to make requests. To make requests. <laughs> Again, in August 1985, I was visiting Japan for the first time. And I didn't want to be just a tourist. I wanted to talk with Japanese people. So how how can you talk to people if you're just a tourist, right? So I, kept, I kept asking myself the question. And finally I came up with an idea. And what I did is I made up a sign a, a, a little bit similar to this sign. But I was so nervous. Would you go to a subway stop and hold up that sign? <laughs> yeah, most of us would be very nervous. Maybe even the police will take me away. But I chose courage and I hold up the sign anyway. And in one hour, I had four very good conversations with four different Japanese. Since that time, I've held up that sign in over a hundred cities all over Asia and, and 50 cities all over China. Made many great friends and had some great good conversations. But holding up the sign is making a request, right? I'm requesting people to come talk with me. Again, if you make a request, if you don't make a request, the answer is always no. If you make a request, the answer could be yes or no. The next type of courage is the courage to say no. What if you said no whenever you want to say no?